four cardinal features of tetralogy of fallow are malalignment ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta, infundibular pulmonary stenosis, and right ventricular hypertrophy. The variability in clinical presentation of TOF correlates with degree of right ventricular outflow tract obstruction and the size and anatomy of pulmonary artery and its branches. They usually present with cyanosis in childhood. Squatting on exertion and cyanotic spells are classical symptoms of TOF. The lifted up apex, core and sabo, peasant's boot shaped heart due to the right ventricular hypertrophy is seen well in this chest x-ray PA view. The right sided aortic arch is seen indenting the tracheal air column on the right side. There is mild cardiomegaly and right atrial enlargement as well in this adult person with tetralogy of fallow and associated inferior wall myocardial infarction. The lung fields are oligemic due to the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction in tetralogy of fallow. Tetralogy of fallow is the commonest cause of right aortic arch in an adult. Color Doppler echo in TOF. The blue color is the flow of blood from right ventricle across the ventricular septal defect into the overriding aorta. This causes desaturation of aortic blood and cyanosis in tetralogy of fallow. The blood from the right ventricle preferentially enters the aorta which is overriding the ventricular septal defect because right ventricular outflow tract is narrowed in tetralogy of fallow as a result of infundibular pulmonary stenosis. Parasternal long axis view in tetralogy of fallow diastolic frame showing the aortic valve in closed position and mitral valve in open position. The aortic valve appears to impinge on the ventricular septum but the ventricular septal defect with aortic override and connection between right ventricle and aorta is evident just above the septum. Apical five chamber view in tetralogy of fallow demonstrating the sub aortic ventricular septal defect with aortic override. 50% of the aorta is committed to the left ventricle while the remaining half is committed to the right ventricle. The VST in tetralogy of fallow is a malalignment VST which results from the malalignment of the ventricular septum with respect to the aorticopulmonary septum during embryonic development. The shift of the aorticopulmonary septum towards the pulmonary side produces both the ventricular septal defect and the narrowing of the right ventricular outflow tract. Anne Prague and colleagues hypothesized that all the features of tetralogy of fallow are due to the underdevelopment of the infundibular septum and its sequelae. They termed this as a monology called by others as Van Prague's monology of fallow. Epical five chamber view in tetralogy of fallow with color flow mapping in systole with right to left shunt across the ventricular septal defect. Blue stream moving from the right ventricle across the VST to the aorta is clearly visualized in this frame. There is also a blue stream from the left ventricle to the aorta. Color flow imaging shows high velocity jet in the pulmonary artery arising distally from the descending aorta suggesting a patent ductus arteriosus. This is one of the compensatory mechanisms to improve pulmonary flow in tetralogy of fallow. Another mechanism is major aortopulmonary collateral arteries or MAPCA. Intrapulmonary collaterals can also occur in tetralogy of fallow. The image is in the parasternal short axis view. Continuous wave Doppler interrogation of the jet guided by color flow mapping picks up the continuous flow with a peak gradient of 61.5 mm of mercury. The gradient is calculated from the velocity measured by the device using the formula P equal to 4V squared. Findings to be sought in an aortogram in tetralogy of fallow are aortic regurgitation, coronary anomalies, MAPCAS, PDA and side of the aortic arch. Still frame from an angiogram with radio contrast dye injected using a pigtail catheter kept in the right brachiocephalic artery showing major aortopulmonary collateral artery arising from the right internal mammary artery. APCAS are seen in severe forms of tetralogy of fallow and pulmonary atresia. When the lungs are supplied by multiple MAPCAS, they are unifocalized prior to definitive surgical repair of tetralogy of fallow. Connecting the distal end of MAPCAS to a single vessel is known as unifocalization. Collaterals to the pulmonary arterial branches 
can also arise from the bronchial arteries within the lungs. Hilar collaterals can also occur in pulmonary atresia. Surgical approaches to TOF would include palliative systemic pulmonary shunts like Blalock toxic shunt, water stent shunt and pot shunt. Complete repair is accomplished by patch VST closure, resection of the subpulmonic obstruction, a transannular patch around the pulmonary valve annulus if necessary and a takedown of prior shunt. Placement of a transannular patch for widening of the RVOT usually leads to severe pulmonary regurgitation. Systemic pulmonary shunts lead to high flow through the pulmonary artery, elevated pulmonary vascular resistance and branch pulmonary artery distortion. Survival after repair is worse in patients with prior central shunts that is water stent or pots possibly due to the higher unrestrictive pulmonary blood flow. Some patients with Blalock toxic shunts may survive unrepaired into adulthood. These patients should be evaluated for pulmonary artery stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. Those who had pulmonary valve atresia or anomalous left anterior descending coronary artery may have had prosthetic or homograph conduits with or without a valve placed between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. Endothelial overgrowth can occur within the conduit and cause obstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract. This can be treated with balloon dilatation or surgical replacement of the conduit. Pulmonary regurgitation is almost universal after corrective repair of tetralogy of fallow, more so in those who require a transalgenic patch for widening of the right ventricular outflow tract. Hence, an early diastolic murmur along the left sternal edge following repair of tetralogy of fallow is most often due to pulmonary regurgitation. But a few cases may also develop aortic regurgitation due to various reasons. Iota is dilated in tetralogy of fallow prior to repair because it receives a major portion of the output from the right ventricle as well as the left ventricular output. This is the reason for a high volume pulse in tetralogy of fallow. Thus, dilatation of the aortic root is one of the potential reasons for aortic regurgitation in tetralogy of fallow. Other causes are lack of support due to a sub-aortic ventricular septal defect and valvular deformation resulting from retraction of the surgical patch. The risk of sudden cardiac death in operated tetralogy of fallow is 25 to 100 fold than in the general population and it can occur decades after correction. The risk is related to QRS duration more than 180 milliseconds. QRS widening is related to pulmonary regurgitation, right ventricular dilatation and conduction defect. Atrial arrhythmias are also common after TOF repair. Hemodynamic effects of pulmonary regurgitation include chronic right ventricular volume overload, right ventricular dysfunction and exercise intolerance. Pulmonary wall replacement can decrease QRS duration and stabilize right ventricular function though the timing is unclear but earlier would be better than later. Right ventricular function can be evaluated by echo or magnetic resonance imaging. It is well known that adults with previously operated tetralogy of fallow can develop ventricular tachyarrhythmias and die suddenly. They are prone for ventricular tachycardia as well as atrial tachyarrhythmias like atrial flutter and fibrillation. Syncope may be a forerunner of sudden death in some individuals with operated tetralogy of fallow and calls for evaluation. An annual incidence of 0.4% sudden death during the first 25 years after surgery has been reported. Both the surgical scar as well as the dilatation of the right ventricle and right atrium due to the pulmonary and tricuspid regurgitation are thought to have roles in arrhythmogenesis. Highest risk is in those with marked cardiomegaly with cardiothoracic ratio more than 60%, severe pulmonary and or tricuspid regurgitation, QRS duration on the electrocardiogram of more than 180 milliseconds and a QT interval dispersion of more than 60 milliseconds. Surgical correction of the pulmonary regurgitation with the valvular prosthesis and tricuspid regurgitation by anuloplasty may decrease the chance of atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. 
This is more likely if surgical repair is also accompanied by mapping and ablation of the re-entry circuit of the arrhythmia.